I have a strong interest in electric vehicles. With the rising popularity of the Ionic Hybrid and the availability of the Ionic EV, a purely electric car is a viable option in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago is a twin island nation in the Caribbean. It has approximately 8,320 kilometers of paved roadway. This might not seem like a lot, but take into consideration that the Twin Island State has a land area of about 5,128 square kilometers. When talking about electric cars, one of the common concerns people have is their range. Take for example the 2017 Ionic. According to the company's website, this vehicle has a range of about 200 kilometers. On average, a purely battery-powered electric vehicle will have a range of about 184 kilometers, while a purely gas vehicle will typically have a range of 663 kilometers. Plug-in hybrids tend to fare a bit better with a range of 708 kilometers. But it's important to note that these are averages. For example, the Tesla Model S Long Range has a range of about 539 kilometers according to Tesla's website, which is significantly above the average range. Also, most people don't travel almost 600 kilometers per day. This is roughly the distance between Arima and Port of Spain about 12 times. Despite their reasonable range, sooner or later an electric vehicle will run out of charge. Recharging is another concern people have when considering an electric vehicle. Unfortunately, there is no public charging infrastructure in the country, at least not yet. This means that any EV owner will have to charge their vehicle at home which is actually an advantage if you don't live in an apartment. Most EVs can be charged on normal mains power. It just takes a while. Charging on 110 volts, your standard grounded wall plug, you should be able to charge about 65 kilometers of range in about eight hours. This is called level one charging. Level two charging can be done on 220 volts. Your electric stoves, dryers, and some air conditionings may use similar plugs. With level 2 charging, you can expect to recharge about 290 kilometers in an 8 hour period. Instead of looking at the gas meter and rushing to the nearest service station, you simply plug in when you get home for at least 8 hours. If you are home for at least 8 hours per day, this can be more convenient than taking a detour from your planned route to go to a station. Also keep in mind you only need to charge when your range is low, so depending on your commute and your vehicle battery size, that may not be every time you park. Another advantage of EVs is that electricity tends to be cheaper than gas. Assuming the highest residential rates, TNTech charges 37 cents per kilowatt hour. Continuing with our example, the Ionic has an 88 kilowatt hour battery. This means to fully charge this battery, you would spend roughly $32.56, which will give you a range of about 200 kilometers. An internal combustion engine can average about 8.5 kilometers per liter. To travel the same 200 kilometers, you would need about 24 liters of fuel. The current price of Super Unleaded is $4.97, which means you would spend about $119.28 on a similar trip. These numbers are of course rough estimates, but the cost of electricity as it stands right now is cheaper per kilometer than the price of fuel. While on the point of operating cost, it's important to note that EVs typically are cheaper to maintain. With fewer moving parts than an internal combustion engine, an electric motor has less components that can suffer from wear and tear. Less moving parts means less things that can be broken and need replacing. Because of how electric motors work, most electric vehicles use regenerative brakes, which means your brakes will need to be changed less often. Regenerative braking uses the electric motor to slow down the vehicle. When you take your foot off the accelerator, the vehicle uses the spinning of the motor to function as a generator and recharge the battery. This causes resistance and in turn slows down the vehicle. This means that the friction brake only needs to be applied at the end of a stopping maneuver. Electric vehicles do however have their shortcomings. For example, gasoline cars are typically cheaper than EVs. If you want a vehicle and you're short on cash, an EV will most times not be an option. Stick with the Ionic as it is one of the only EVs currently available brand new in Trinidad. Purchasing the EV version will set you back about $240,000, but it is just $189,000 for the hybrid. For $51,000 less, you get the same car with a very impressive 20 kilometers per liter. Another issue is the charging. 
While in most cases it can be an advantage, if you live in an apartment or you don't have access to dedicated parking, an electric vehicle is largely out of the question as long as there is no dedicated charging infrastructure. You will have no way to charge your car because there will be nowhere to plug it in. Sure, you can charge it at your office or random places with outlets using your portable charger, but that is significantly less convenient than a gas station. Also, forgetting to charge will be more of an issue than forgetting to fuel, as there is no jerry can for an electric vehicle. Sure, there are portable generators and portable batteries, but these are less convenient than their gasoline counterparts. However, most EVs go out of their way to make you aware of how much range you have left. A responsible driver should not get caught off guard by this. EVs may still have a way to go to make mass adoption painless. However, Trinidad's small size makes it perfect for even shorter range electric vehicles, even without dedicated charging infrastructure. Whether or not an EV is right for you will depend on your commute and living situation. If you drive less than 200 kilometers a day and have access to parking, you may be able to take advantage of it. Often when a green solution is offered, it results in an inferior product being used for the greater good. This does not seem to be the case with electric vehicles. In many instances, electric vehicles are superior to their internal combustion counterparts. There is after all no shortage of EVs demonstrating their superior acceleration, or winning races against sports cars, they seem to have no business racing in the first place. And make no mistake, electric vehicles are the future. Many legacy automakers have already produced or have plans to produce all electric versions of their vehicles. Big names like GM, Jaguar Land Rover, Volvo all have plans to only produce all electric or electric hybrid vehicles within the next five years. Without subsidy on gas reducing causing higher prices at the pump, perhaps the solution is not new subsidies but moving away from gas at the pump.